Yes, it's true. Dr. Phil's eyeballs pop completely out of his head on the view, but he also completely destroys Whoopi Goldberg in this segment, Sarah Haynes, and what's the other one? Anne Navarro. This is Doug in exile. This is this is how we do it in exile. In like 08, 09, smartphones came on and and kids started, they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives. Mm. We start with agreement and then... Hey, hey, that's facts right there. People, it's a lot of kids nowadays, a lot of, it's a lot of older people doing this too. Cause you know, the app of TikTok, I really feel like TikTok started all this cause now other social media platforms like so, uh, YouTube, Instagram, coming out with these short videos, just lowering, lowering people's attention span. And not a lot of people like focus nowadays. It's just people on their phones not all day, not doing nothing, just watching other. I, I can I can agree because I I can relate to that because I remember I used to be on social media like Instagram, and uh, I used to just see people just live their best lives. And I'm really thinking like I put in this thing in my head like, oh these people living their best lives, and like I'm just sitting here home not doing nothing with my life, but. You know, everybody's life is not perfect. I know a lot of people go through things, and it's like you could put that Im you could put this image on Instagram and not knowing behind closed doors like what they're going through. And yeah, yeah, that's what I He's going to set the whole place on fire. So we saw the biggest spike and the highest levels of depression, anxiety, loneliness, and suicidality mm -hmm. since records have ever been kept. And also not controversial that depression, suicidality has grown with our use of phones. It's been terrible. Hmm. And it's just continued on and on and on. And then COVID hits 10 years later, and the same agencies that knew that are the agencies that shut down the schools for two years. Okay, so now look at his eyeballs bulging out of his head. Dr. Phil, has become a sideshow freak. But his comments are, are correct, that the same experts that knew about the lack of activity and what kids were doing on the phone also knew that you can't take kids out of the public uh, in social distancing. And so they might have saved their life regarding the virus. That's not what I'm arguing at all. Wait, wait. Um, you can't take kids out of the public. Uh, in social distancing. And so they might have saved their life regarding the virus. That's not what I'm arguing. I can't agree with that. You can't take kids out of public social distancing because like people need to like, you know, network with other kids or like play around with other kids, not sit around the house all day in like a four wall like room and stuff. Like you need, you need to go outside sometimes, like socialize with other people. At all. I'm only saying if you put kids in what is essentially solitary confinement in a home and no longer allow them to go outside and play with each other in public groups, like there's a certain amount of socialization that happens in our school, um, the experts knew it would damage them to some degree. Who does that? Who takes away the support system for these children? Who takes them away and shuts it down? Who does that? It's people like The View. He's going, who does that? Who shuts it down when they knew there would be damage? And by the way, when they shut it down, they stopped the mandated reporters from being able to see children that were being abused and sexually molested, and in fact, sent them home and abandoned them to their abusers with no way to watch, and referrals dropped 50 to 60%. The view, because they're Democrats and they have politicized this issue, Anyone who talks like Dr. Phil right now, you're they're going to see him as some crazy Trumpy Republican Christian nationalist. Yes, yes, I can agree. Because when I talk about certain stuff like this, if people just look at me crazy, like I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just like I don't like talking to people around my age, knowing I'm like I'm still a teenager, 18 years old, but. You know, I can't talk about certain stuff like this today because they're going to think I'm crazy. don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Redneck. So, there was also a yeah. pandemic yeah, going was, on. They were trying to save kids' lives. They were trying to save so kids' well. lives. Now they're, oh, man, they're falling over each other now. Whoopi and they were trying to save people's lives. That's all they were trying to do is trying to save them from the, 
okay. I'm, I'm not denying the attempt. They were trying. So remember, we know a lot of folks who died during this. So it wasn't, people weren't laying not around eating children. bond, but. Not, he says, not school children. And he, he means, Whoopi's saying something correct, by the way. We know people who died, and Dr. Phil is saying something also correct. You know people who died, but not the school children. So locking everything down did not save their lives because they, in general, were not vulnerable. Well, you know what? We're lucky. Maybe we're lucky they didn't because we kept them out of the 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 places that they could be, be sick. That's not what happened. It's the kids just were not vulnerable to this particular virus the way that older people were. She has invented a political narrative. Because no one wanted to believe we had an issue. Now, that's not true that no one wanted to believe that we had an issue. Everyone knew we had an issue. Are you saying no school children died of COVID? Now, Ann Navarro gives a terrible argument saying, are you saying no kids died of COVID? That literally is not what he said. He didn't mean zero. This is a weird thing where once you think that the shutdown was necessary, you now have to argue that there was no possible. And it's crazy how the COVID stuff is not even really existing, but they said it's coming back, but I don't believe it's coming back. But yeah, like after like four, I don't know how many years, four years, over four years. Yeah, it's like what happened to it is it's all gone. And we had, they was doing all this stuff during that year, 2020. Uh, we had to get vaccinated. We had to do all this stuff. And now everything just disappeared. Like none of this virus is like, it's like, it's not even here no more. So it's like, we did all this, nothing. Like there was, there had to be a meaning and reason behind all that stuff. All, man, I don't even want to get too conscious. Negative side to it. See, that's what Ann Navarro's doing, and it really shows an unsophisticated mind. I'm saying it was the safest group. They were the less vulnerable group. And that is not uh, controversial. It is to the view because they have an, a, a political agenda to demonize people who are not 100% on board, yes, sir, marching to the flag and the goose stepping in the streets. And they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. And that's not an opinion, that's a fact. But Dr. Phil has done something that is very rare to see on The View. The audience is clapping for him and they're against all of the five panelists on The View. And the hosts are just gonna go unglued on them. They're getting the this. Well, Phil. We don't even have time to talk it out now, man. Oh, yeah, we can't even talk. And Phil's going like, yeah, I'd love to talk about this more. And Whoopi's like going, uh, uh, Dr. Phil has a book. Goodbye, everybody. But thanks for coming. The new book is called... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please be cautious. Don't get me into trouble. I'm Doug. Man, I even know Dr. Phil knew that much information. I guess he's woke and he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> But yeah, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I'm watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'm going.